Dio. No matter what happens, live nobly and with pride. If you do that, you'll surely be able to go to heaven. I wonder if my mother, that always used to tell me that, did indeed go to heaven in the end. Although she lived at the bottom rung of society, she lived with a pride that she never lost over the whole course of her life. But while that may be true, being so, or rather because she was such a person, I do not think she obtained a ticket to heaven. I don't think so. She was noble and proud, pure and righteous and beautiful. She was even goddess-like, but at the same time, she was a hopelessly foolish woman. I hated that hopeless foolishness. Take this, for example. We were so impoverished we would be worried about eating meals that day, and that she and I, her son, were in an environment where we suffered from having empty stomachs. Yet, she shared the paltry sum of money she had worked to earn on hungry children or even elderly people and sometimes animals. She gave charity and blessings to weaklings like it was her duty. What's the word? Kindness? She would scatter that sort of thing freely to those around her, and what is that, if not foolish? One can't help but hate that. Her way of life, where she would put herself as well as her family second, was noble and proud, but in that bottom-rung town, there was no one to assess nobility and pride. Depending on the place, like where the Joestar family lived, that sort of idyllic country town, such a character could be reasonably recognized, but... In that town that was worse than a ditch, to be honest, she was a laughingstock. The children took her charity, and the elderly people all laughed at her. They roared with laughter like they were seeing a thoroughly entertaining, hilarious joke being played. And when I heard that laughter, I didn't really have much animosity to it anymore. They were absolutely right, I thought. Enough so that I wanted to laugh right along with them. My anger toward my mother took precedence, so of course I didn't do so, but... To a degree, I felt so. My mother was foolish. Helplessly foolish. Be that as it may, you might expect, being the son of that mother, I was made fun of and looked down on. I couldn't just let those people that were laughing at my mother get away with it, but whenever I did that, my mother scolded me. Rather than the ones that were laughing at her, she scolded me that got angry in her defense. You mustn't do that, Dio. You must not live relying on violence. If you do such things, you will not go to heaven. Thinking back it was like her favorite phrase. Words themselves have concrete meanings, but maybe to her it was something more like an incantation. Her simply saying those things left an impression on me. She need only say the word heaven and it felt like she might be saved. I had to think that because otherwise that woman's feelings were completely incomprehensible to me. No. Even if I did think that, she was undoubtedly impossible to understand, but thinking back on it now, I feel it was probably brought a reasonable amount of light into her life when she was constantly laughed at. Anyhow, my mother took every opportunity to say to me as a young child, if you do this, you can go to heaven. If you do that, you can't go to heaven. Heaven, heaven, heaven and every time it irritated me. My childhood mind learned severe irritation. I thought of them as irrational words and I couldn't forgive my mother. That's why whenever I would see my drunk father commit violence against her, it almost made me feel relieved. Serves you right, I thought. Thinking about it now, it seems rather foolish, but as a young child, I liked my father more than my mother. I felt that my low life, insignificant, hopeless father was far better than my proud and noble mother my mother was a giver, or perhaps a donor, then I guess you could say my father was a taker. Thinking back on my long connection with the Joestar family, a faded connection spanning over a hundred years, his simple habit of stealing may have been the impetus. What he took from George Joestar was the cause of it all. I never once saw him work. Never saw him work or earn anything for himself. Through random gambling, swindling, and extortion, he took cash and food from people in town, but he never earned. He only took. He was always doing that. The way he lived his life up until death was the exact opposite of my mother. And in that town, the one that was right was my father. My father's way of living was honest and correct. At the very least, I thought that the way my father lived so uninhibited and cunningly was cool. 
I wouldn't say I looked up to him, but I would say I respected him. It really does seem foolish looking back on it now. I was not in my proper senses, but I thought the way he lived was very skillful. He was always taking from the weak, and in response to necessity, or maybe not in response to necessity, he would beat other people, and for me, a still innocent child, you could not be stronger than that. I watched him. He was strong, stylish, and cool, and in that broken down slum of a town, knowing that my father was such a person was my life's greatest and really only pride. But my mother repudiated that. She downright hated it. Dear, please stop. Let's go give back the money that you stole. You mustn't do these things. If you do things like this, you'll never get to heaven. And whenever she said that, she got hit. A foolish woman got foolishly beaten. And when she collapsed, he would violently kick her and throw liquor bottles at her, and I only found out about it later, but a little brother or sister that could have been was lost to that violence. It's a cruel story. It's a cruel story, isn't it? Surely it is. But among that daily violence, she was forthright to the end. In that life at the bottom rung of society in that terrible environment, she always talked about justice, ethics, morals. She held those dearly to her and they served no purpose. I wish she'd have just shut up. At the very least, I wish she'd have overlooked my father's actions. If she'd just done that, she could have escaped his violence. No, when I think of my father and his drunken frenzies, you probably couldn't escape no matter what you did. But when I was a child, in an attempt to do so, I would stay quiet or get away from him when he drank, and that at least minimized the amount of damage that I received. Even a child could figure that out, but she never did. Quite the opposite. When my father drank heavily and got drunk off of his ass, she fought him. You mustn't drink so much liquor, and the like. She would say obvious things like that. Then she would get hit, and then she would say obvious things, and then she would get hit, and then she would say obvious things. What exactly was going to come out of saying things like that? If you thought about it, it really should have been easy to figure out. Seeing her try to talk to my father despite the fact that she did nothing to defend herself from being beaten really couldn't be expressed as anything but humorous. It's strange, but I can't help but question it. Even if she couldn't escape the scorn, she should have been able to escape the violence, so why didn't she? Is it really as I always thought, that she was just foolish? Because she wasn't smart? Was my mother a hopeless idiot? That's wrong. A hundred years have passed, and now I know that is wrong. I know the so-called outside world, and I know the next world. It's true that my mother at least had intelligence and education. Even while in poverty where I really couldn't go to school, the one that taught me things in place of a teacher was her. It's because I had that education I was able to live with such determination later. Never once thanked her for that while she was alive, though I didn't think such an education could serve any purpose. But honestly, if it weren't for that, I doubt I could have survived at that refined Joestar home. I really never cared about my mother's bloodline, but when I investigated, I found out that she may have actually come from the upper echelons of society. If I'm allowed to say something a little prejudiced, her refinement and dignity and piety were at the very least not born out of poverty. They must have been born out of a life of luxury, but why a woman such as that would marry my father, or why she fell into this miserable town, I can't call anything but mysteries. Speaking of which, my father once told me something while drunk. Something about him eloping with my mother and how's that for love and romance and worthless drivel like that. I dismissed it all as drunken nonsense, but I don't know whether or not it was actually true. I ignored it as it seemed like an incredibly hard story to swallow, but I can't confirm it is true. It might not have been nonsense either. Perhaps that father of mine said something truthful, although... I guess there's no way to find out now. Dio, don't blame your father. Your father's really a kind person. He just shouldn't drink. If only he'd quit drinking, I'm sure your father would work hard. Now this was nonsense.
I thought. My mother always said such things to me with such a serious look on her face and took all I had not to cry out against her. I wanted to ask how you could possibly be that foolish. He was really a kind person. If only he stopped drinking. How or where could you look or in what way could you try to explain it in order to think like that? All I could think was that my mother had finally lost her mind from being beaten too much. If one assumed that, one could even say they were actually a very well-matched couple, but no. No matter how you thought about it, they were incredibly mismatched. Despite that living as the life of a low-life father, my mother made it a principle to do good. She aimed at going to heaven, and that must have been tantamount to torture. Perhaps for her that was the most charitable thing she could do. Perhaps she thought that getting close to that father of mine and to remain married to him for life was a mission given to her by God, or something along those lines. It's an audacious hypothesis and I have no basis for it, but unless I think it was something like that, I honestly can't understand it. Her life was incomprehensible. She was the laughing stock of the town and she still tried to help him. She was beaten bloody by him and she still tried to serve him. Every day she worked to the brink of collapse. And one day she really did collapse and passed away. I really can't understand her. In the end, I still wonder if she did get to heaven. I don't think she did. Surely she couldn't go anywhere. She had nowhere to arrive and nowhere to go back to. But there may be a way to get to heaven. At some point, I started thinking like that. I didn't think about it as a young child, and the heaven that I'm talking about may not really be the same heaven my mother was talking about. But at some point, I started thinking in such a way. When I say at some point, I'm vague about the time it occurred, it's not really because I'm unsure of when it happened. Not really. Rather, I know quite clearly and with great confidence when that moment was was when that witch, Enya the Hag, prevented, presented me with the items the bow and the arrow, and I gained my stand, the world. To be precise, it was when my stand ability called the world awoke. The ability to control time. Like gears meshing when that ability was incredible even for me, I was convinced. No, I, I suppose saying convinced is going too far. I only say that because it's easier to understand that way, even if it's not really how things were. At that point, it was purely a maybe level of thought. But I thought it. I thought it. That maybe there's a way to get to heaven. I thought that. I'm saying that I started at that time and place, but looking back on it now, ever since then, I really have been searching for a way to get to heaven. For that purpose. I even thought that I was alive only for that purpose. That was my goal in life. At the very least, the four years I've spent on the surface after living for nearly a hundred years at the bottom of the sea have all been for the sake of going to heaven. I need to see heaven. I must go to heaven. I thought in such a manner, and it's most likely that I started thinking it ever since I gained my stand. There may be a way to get to heaven, and I searched for it. Perhaps in my foolish mother's place I'm trying to go to heaven? Or perhaps I'm just trying to see the scenery of heaven and report it to my mother? No, that's wrong. Absolutely wrong. Even I know. <laughs> Irrecoverably, she was foolish. She lived in a foolish manner, and it's no surprise that she died. If I'm speaking about her, I could say that it was death from pushing herself too far. I could say she was beaten to death by my father, even if that wasn't it, or whatever it was. However that woman lived, it was impossible for her to have lived a long life. She died while being laughed at. She died while being beaten. And until the end, she never blamed anyone or anything. Dio, no matter what happens, live nobly and with pride. If you do that, you'll surely be able to go to heaven. That implausible idea to the end. Until the very end, that woman kept saying that to me. 
even at the point of death, she said that. I think perhaps that was a very sinful thing to do. I do think that. I don't think it specifically because it was done to me, but in that town that even hell was preferable to, to force a child to live righteously was nearly abuse. Compared to that, I do think my father was more honest. For that town, he was right. Take the things you want. Swipe that from over there. Earn your food. That's exactly right. Truly right. I had nothing to object to. Compared to that, the dreamlike things my mother said and what I wanted to learn from her were not about God and heaven, but practical things I could make use of and allow me to survive. And I said that. I said there's no such thing as heaven. This is hell and this is all there is. And when I said that, my mother made a sad face. You don't understand, you're still a child. When you grow up, I'm sure you will understand. Heaven does exist and there's a way to get there. We have to live for the purpose of that. Why? Even if there is a heaven, why did I have to live for it? And being told I was just a child obviously wasn't going to convince me. Toward a child, because it is a child, the only way to end a conversation is with fact or violence. Rather, to a child like that that doesn't understand anything, forcing them to do anything is unreasonable. That's what I thought then, and I still do. My mother's, my mother's coercion was abnormal. She never showed any sign of it, but I wonder if she was emotionally distressed. Living that painful life, a rock-bottom life, Maybe living that way was the only way she could maintain her sense of self. It's probable. Heaven. That's the key word. For her, that was salvation. If that was the case, as I thought she was just foolish, I can only think she became mentally ill from that empty stomach and all the violence. If she had lived until I was a little older, then... Perhaps instead of using violence like my father did, I could have used logic to convince her and release her from her curse, but I'm not sure I would be able to. I'd have told her that lifestyle of hers was mistaken, and yes, I would have been able to convince her. But I was still just a small child, and she died quite abruptly. We buried her in a crude funeral, and I doubt she was able to get to heaven. Even on the day of the funeral, my father was drunk. You can't help what's dead. You think because you have a funeral they'll come back to life, you idiot? My father's point of view, and I assumed it must be right. I didn't feel very sad, I, I felt refreshed. For mother, this should be good, I thought. She was finally able to die. She could finally rest. Even so, I really don't think she was able to get to heaven, but just being released from hell should be enough. And unfortunately, I don't think that I can get to heaven. At the rate I'm going, I don't think I can get there. I'm searching for how to get there, and I feel I've found half of it, but while I have already obtained the world, the one-way ticket to heaven, as things stand the way I am, doesn't seem like I can get there. That is the conclusion I must come to, but I'm not giving up. I am currently forced to admit that it will be difficult, difficult to get there on my power alone. What I really require is a friend that I can trust, a human that can control desire. He must be a human with no desire for power or hunger for fame or lust. He must hold God's law in a higher esteem than he does man's law. Will I, Dio, ever really be able to meet such a person? Someone that you could call the antithesis of me, that kind of person? No, I must meet him. I must find such a friend. That's why, in preparation for that day, I'm recording information in this notebook. How to go to heaven. No matter what events come to pass, I'm writing in detail in order to have persuasive power to denote whether or not I have reached the way to get to heaven. Granted, leaving behind such a record is dangerous. If this notebook were to be seen, for example, by someone like my old enemy Jonathan Jostar, it would be an unsavory situation. 
I don't want such people to know of my goals. If he or they knew of it, they would be sure to try to prevent me from reaching it. Of course, if they do interfere, all I would need to do is find and defeat them, but currently I'm not prepared for that. I'm not completely accustomed to this body that I stole from Jonathan a hundred years ago. In a single word, I suppose I am unsound. With my stand, the world, I'm fairly confident I could beat them. But be that as it may, when I consider my pride, I realize all too keenly that humiliating defeat I suffered a hundred years ago. So while recording how to go to heaven like this is exceedingly risky, it is a risk I must take. This is not something that can exist only in my head, to be something that only I understand. It's necessary for me to organize and put it into writing, so friends I have yet to meet are able to understand the method, so that even if I am gone, the method can be realized. Taking up a pen like this at all is really something I haven't done in some time. Perhaps it'll do me some good beyond organizing my thoughts. It reminds me of it, my days as a student back when I pretended to be Jonathan's friend. There are a great many things that I must do. I have to travel the world in order to find my yet unfound friend, and I'll have to do it all on my own two legs. Might have been a hundred years ago, but this world is one hundred years in the future. Finding a person of such pure spirit is likely not to be an easy task. To win over such a person will probably be even more difficult. I can't turn them into a zombie or embed a flesh bud into them. It must be a person that I have complete and total faith in. Seems ridiculously unlikely that I could even do such a thing. A ah, sickening degree of difficulties lie ahead. But that's why a record is needed. An objective record. A point of view not based on opinion, mine or anyone else's. If I aim to do that, I may realize some things that I've overlooked. Regardless, for now, I'll keep this notebook a secret. The lot in my organization, especially Anyaba, would not understand. I can practically already hear that old lady telling me it's worthless. Never should have done such a thing. I've told that strange old woman my goal is to stand at the top of the world. Something that I am fated to do. And now that I think about it, that's true. At the very least, it's something that's impossible for anyone but myself to achieve. The world has the type of power that exists only for that purpose. But, no. Happiness isn't something that you gain by having an invincible body, great riches, or even standing at the pinnacle of humanity. No victory would allow me to attain it. A true victor is only the one who has seen heaven. And no matter what sacrifices I must make, I will go there. If I have to sacrifice my organization and even my own stand, I will go there. Perhaps the form is different, but the place my mother tried to go, the place I don't think my mother could get to, I will go. Yesterday I wrote something, like, just now, after a hundred years has passed, I understand, but... As I think about that, I still can't say that my mother wasn't completely foolish. But still, now that time has passed, I see that far more foolish than my mother was my father. A little while after my mother died, it, I guess it wasn't even a little while, I now realize that. The violence up to that point had been mostly directed toward my mother, and now it was all done to me. He beat me on an everyday basis. I was a child, so of course he hit me whenever I would make childlike mistakes, but even when I did something well, it felt like I rubbed him the wrong way. He honestly would beat me even worse when I did that than it did when I made mistakes. It's almost like he thought of beating a child as training for the world. I've heard people say some twisted words like, go ahead and beat your child. The child will know why. As a child back then, I didn't understand it all. In fact, eventually I soon understood. I understood there was no reason. My father was just the kind of man who tyrannized weak people in order to affirm his own dominance. My mother was foolish, true, but even if she wasn't, even if she had a personality fitting for that town, I'm sure my father would have found some other reason to terrorize her. 
and I thought without a doubt that because my mother was mistaken and she was foolish, that's why she was beaten, but that had nothing to do with it. And what I said about how she would have minimized the damage if she stayed quiet, well, I don't think that would be the case. <laughs>